Purcell was a, a truly great musician. When you hear that music, you know, it was done by a man who's totally inspired by what he did, as so many of these men were. And, you know, one of the things that <coughs> strikes me is the quality of his work. And, you know, some of the stuff he created, uh, like these two hymns, I Am Glad and My Heart Is Indicting, are famous, you know, uh, anthems uh, throughout the world uh, because of what, what he did. And, you know, he was, he was such a good organist that he was he became an organ chief organist at the uh, Westminster Abbey <coughs> and he was he was uh, buried next to the organ of Westminster Abbey what a great man and his mu and his music still is played and still is loved and is so fantastic and played by many many eminent um, orchestras whether they're using organs or they're using full orchestras or they're playing with just the trumpet and it's and like this one here it sounds so sweet and beautiful but you know one of the things I'd like to say is that this nation was truly a great nation and you know these are the men who helped build it up could you imagine our nation without these cre these people who are so creative and yet Yahweh the God of the Bible says that before you're born I work with you in the in in the womb what for your mind so many of these men I mean this it, it, blow who was his teacher resigned to let him have the position that he had because he was such a brilliant student that's how good Purcell was. I mean, some of these men are, are, who've written these oratorias and these classical works sort of almost crawled out the womb and walked and crawled across the floor up to the piano and started playing and creating music. You know, and how did that happen? Well, as he always says, I, I work with the man's mind before he is born. And, you know, whilst we believed, we seemed to have this ability where everybody wanted us. And <clears throat> now everybody's shooting at us and trying to destroy us. And if you don't believe that, have a look what's going on in Afghanistan. Have a look what's going on in the world while, while our nation collapses economically. Here's an example. I just did this because this is actually a copy of a pie cro draft, cro draft I had in one of my um, books, many books, and it's over in the other library I've got. And you can see there that there's, well, this area is blackened out. You can see that. And the white area is what the rest of the world invest, invested in the 1920s. And the blackened out area is what Britain invested in the world. Now, I don't know what you think. At the present moment, we are not investing. We are bankrupt as a nation. And something seems to be seriously wrong. wrong. And I have left on some of my sites, well, all of my sites, some of the guttural con uh, comments by men who have no idea of what they're talking about but can only swear and use bad language. I've left them there because it gives people an indication of how far we've come down. Instead of offering uh, a, uh, a, a reasonable argument or whatever it is, all it can do is get person and offer foul language. Is that where we've got to? Instead of being learned, uh, the people of the world worry about us going there, like in France, etc., because of our football hooligans and our drunkenness. This is the tribe of Ephraim, and it says in the Bible that Ephraim is a drunkard, and we are drunkards today. Now, this might not make a lot of people feel happy with me, but uh, it's not me, it's the fact that it is true. Go and have a look at the French, and at these people who have see our football crowds coming. They've put huge police forces in place to stop us burning the city down. How disgusting, how disgusting thugs, people out of control. And I look at some of these guys, they're about 50 years old, and they still want to get out there and have a fight. How ridiculous! Instead of doing something valuable and, and uh, trying to control things, they're, they're, they're pouring, you know, petrol on the fire instead of water. But, you know, maturity doesn't come to some people. It's a tragedy. And, you know, what I would like to say is that this is also a prophecy that we'll, the town centres and the cities will lose control. We'll even lose control of our schools. We don't teach our, our biblical stuff anymore. I mean, my mother used to know half the Bible. Oh, she, no, she was very secular in her life, and so did my father. They had never went to church, etc. They said it was hypocritical to go to church. I, quite frankly, have the same attitude, because a lot of these churches are hypocritical. But it doesn't, hasn't stopped me from doing a lot of biblical study, historical study, history I've been passionate about for 50, uh, if I look at it, 54 years. Um, if, I, if I look at my uh, current events, we were very much involved in current events. In those days, we discussed them because we didn't have television. 
Today the art of discussion seems to have gone out the window. Sit down and, and, and watch television. We, sh we used to have discuss things and, and, you know, really discuss them. Quite, uh, they were quite strong, you know, mobile discussions that people had. Um, but today it doesn't seem to happen. Just sit down and watch television. And just watch, so don't, don't disturb me, I'm watching television. And I've got to, even myself sometimes, I've got to catch myself because if I'm watching something very interesting, well, I feel the same way sometimes. But that is absolute rudeness. And, you know, we've got various things. We can push buttons where we can record, etc. You can see it later. It's more important to listen to people and start getting discussion going and understand. So don't just listen to your professors and sort of say, oh, he's right. I can tell you, in my life and in my mother's life and, you know, her mother's life, there was various fads and trends that going on. And when I used to come in when I was young and say to my mother, you know, this is what you should be doing. She said, oh, well, that's another fad or a trend. It'll change in a couple of years' time. Guess what? She's right. Those experts, and if we take like uh, Kathleen Kenyon or various people who, who said the Bible is wrong and they get headlines like this uh, because the walls of Jericho fell down 400 years before the Bible did or uh, there was no such thing as the Hittite Empire. And there's a lot of other stuff. I just That's all I've got time to refer to right now. Then later on they found, and found that the experts are wrong, the headlines that appeared for that Bible is wrong, the Bible is right, was about that big on the 50th page under a whole lot of advertising. I just found it because I, I, in those days I used to read the newspapers very avidly. I don't buy newspapers anymore because things like the internet. And you know, um, when I look at YouTube for instance, there's such so much excellent stuff that men have put together. And I looked at the volumes and I think, well, you know, people are not looking at them um, because they don't know about them, I think. Um, you know, let's take a look at the Bible, for instance. Say it's a myth. It isn't a myth. And these are the enemies of the Bible who got the ear. You know that in various polls, only between 9 and 13 percent of people believe in evolution. And that's after hundreds of years of going at it since Darwin. And even he admitted that they hadn't found any transitional forms. They put up things like the coelacanth, which was wrong. They put up uh, Piltdown Man, which turned out to be wrong. And there's a whole lot of others as well, which I don't have time to go into. You know, the, the fossil record, now even they, and you, I've got, if you go to this site here, you'll see like Dr. Patton, who will go into all this and show you that even, the, even the, their own high priests of evolution accept the fact that the fossil record uh, confirms more the biblical um, concept than the, um, uh, the than the evolutionary concept now, and even they have remarked on that. But th it's a faith. They've even announced it's a faith now. Evolution is a faith, and you'll see all that, and the reference is there. But this has only been po possible through uh, this organisation, like YouTube, has allowed all this stuff to be put up because you couldn't get this stuff out before, and instead of remaining ignorant and believing what these experts say who are mostly wrong in my lifetime and my mother's lifetime and my father's lifetime and my grandparents lifetime who are very aware people I would honestly urge you to start looking into things instead of accepting what these professors say who lose every time they get on the the stand with with creationists a matter of fact now they won't even get on the stand with creationists because they know they will lose because evolution has so many holes in it. And that is a fact. You'll see all this if you go on that website. Have a look at patent stuff, etc. But this is all from YouTube. Um, because to me, there's some fantastic stuff on this site that, you know, in my lifetime, I didn't ever expect to see. Once again, thank you for listening.